Welcome back to the Nikki Clark Radio Show on We Are Hotline. And the show is about conversations that matter. People from all walks of life come and share their hard stories, and they talk about ways they are making a difference in the world. And, and we have two amazing world changers on the line with us today. They are the co-founders of Blacks Inspire. Please welcome Sharon Fletcher and Michael Samuel to the show. How are you doing? Oh, wow. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for that great introduction. And I'm doing great as well. So Thank Sharon. you. Awesome. And, uh, thank you, uh, Michael and Sharon, for taking the time to uh, speak with us today. It's been a long time coming, and I'm so glad uh, that we made it happen. And uh, I think we'll just get right to it because uh, the listeners are uh, looking forward to getting to know more about you. So, Sharon, tell me a little bit about your background uh, leading up to being uh, one of the co-founders of Blacks Inspire. Sure. So um, I actually uh, work for the government right now still, but transitioning. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. So I worked with uh, the federal government for 16 years. And during that time, I was also very active in the Employment Equity Committee and our diversity portfolio, as well as a union rep. So um, labor, um, human rights, and uh, those sorts of things have always been a passion of mine. Um, inside the workplace and outside the workplace. And, uh, yeah, that was just always there that I wanted to uh, express and have a, um, have some meaningful impact uh, helping either people who are somewhat disadvantaged or just uh, ensuring that we have an equal playing field, whether it's women or even compounded women and visible minorities. Okay, excellent. And, Michael? Uh, what was your background um, leading up to this uh, co-creation? So myself as well, I've been with the federal government for 16 years, and mm-hmm. I recently took uh, decided to take a sabbatical, so I'm off for a year um, and possibly forever. Um, just <laughs> making this transition, I've always I've always had the entrepreneurial spirit within me um, ever since I was, was a little child. So. Mm-hmm. Um, I've dibbled and dabbled in different things, and uh, this is something now that uh, with all the experience, whether through government or through entrepreneurship, i um, decided to just take the leap and go 100% in. Understandable. Okay, I hear you. So you both started 16 years ago, the federal government level. Did, did you both meet at work? So, yeah, that's, that's actually how we know each other as we are both okay. on our um, respective employment equity committees and our respective okay. uh, union. Um, and so we would meet annually at different conferences and, and, and keep in touch and just, you know, talk about different current events and things happening in our workplace. And that's mm-hmm. how our friendship blossomed. Fantastic. So... I'm hearing um, the passion, Sharon, that you have for, you know, employment equity, and and it sounds like you have um, kind of a, a soft spot for the underdog. Yes, um, yes. Yeah, yeah, did you did you ex- did you experience that, or did you witness that when you were working that kind of fueled your passion? I saw um, some interesting dynamics and how things would uh, play out in the workplace, absolutely. And again, having, being under both categories, a woman and being a woman of color, and Mm -hmm. just seeing how the experience is uh, when trying to go for promotions, when trying to go for opportunities. Now, I've seen people be successful regardless of what their background is, but I've also seen where there are some challenges presented that are unique to people, mm-hmm. um, right, who uh, have a different background or not, you know, considered the, the mainstream or majority um, within, I guess, a, a large organization, right? So uh, I've had very subtle experiences because that's the unique thing to the Canadian experience, right? It, it's sure. not overt, yeah, the subtle racism. but it's, 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 it's subtle, right? So it's mm-hmm. so subtle that you could almost think maybe, maybe, you know, I don't Did that really do happen? so well on that yeah. interview. Maybe, you know, and, but then when you start talking with a few people, <laughs> and you start to go, there's something similar here. 
it's all of us, <laughs> right? Yeah. And um, could all of us really not be that competent, that qualified in this pool of talented and extremely smart people? Because in the government, you have to do very, um, you know, challenging tests, and it, there's a process to get hired, and there's a process to get promoted. So all of us quite competent people can't be missing the mark, right? Um, and then just through friends and, and, and family and hearing other people's stories too um, that have hit close to home. And uh, I'm a people person, so I feel, I tend to feel what people feel and can all, I have a lot of empathy. I tend to feel mm-hmm. a lot of empathy. Um, I can relate to people's experiences really well, even if they haven't been my own. Right. Right, and it's it's a a great quality to have, especially um, you know being in a interactive forum like the one that you created. So, Michael, tell me a little bit about the premise of Blacks Inspire. Why was it created? Well, as Sharon had mentioned, we met at several conferences, and um, we oftentimes we'd have discussions, and one of the common themes within our discussions was essentially how oftentimes black people are shown in a negative light, Um, whether it's through media, whether it's through the workplace. It's just the way that we're presented. Um, It's either we're criminals or um, we're good at sports, but people don't really see us in truly in all aspects of positive things within communities. So, Mm -hmm. The whole concept of Blacks Inspire, um, basically by the name itself, is is basically we, we just want to show Black people in a more positive light and also inspire, um, inspire our youth, inspire people to realize that, you know what, we come in all walks of life and we do a lot of great things and it's not all one-dimensional, it's not all just sports, um, we're everywhere. So... The idea is to promote black people within a positive light. So highlight businesses, highlight people who have talent, to highlight entrepreneurs. That's that's really the premise behind Blacks Inspire. Excellent. And Sharon? Mm-hmm. What, what and to was add your, to that, um, mm-hmm. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, yes. And to add to the, um, what Michael was saying too, that um, there was particularly a time when um, it – appeared that in the media, especially that every time you turned on your TV or the radio, we were hearing about another young male being shot and killed and sure. these parents crying and being helpless. Mm-hmm. And I remember um, going to work and nobody would discuss this topic, the biggest things that are happening in the world, right? And nobody wants to talk about it. And I thought nobody wants to talk about it because this is quite a divisive topic, Right, and I felt like there was this strange feeling and movement happening where I wasn't feeling very empowered, you know, seeing yeah. these images being victimized, and it appeared that the powers that be were not exerting themselves to give us some vindication and even protection, and I really hate feeling. Um, helpless or vulnerable like that. And I thought, as a mom, why should I feel that my child is like an endangered species? And Mike Mm -hmm. and I would talk and say, you know, this is depressing. You know, I'm walking through the world feeling really vulnerable and unsafe for myself, for my kids, Mm -hmm. for my friends and family. And I can't look at this stuff anymore. I don't care if this is what's happening. This is what the current, I don't want to see it. And so then Mike, you know, he was saying, yeah, we need a platform where, we can see some positive images just to get a mental break. And then it started yes. like, like that. And then I also, in our discussions, having, you know, that labor um, human rights aspect within us, I was thinking, how come it appears that our community doesn't quite have the power and influence in place that when these things are happening, um, why isn't legislation in our favor to, to protect mm-hmm. us and make this stop? So then, the idea is that, you know, as a community, our businesses need to be more influential and more successful and powerful because money talks, right? So maybe we need to have a more, um, more influence financially and, and, and in politics. So it's about power and influence and being empowered and 
uniting and mobilizing. So there's a lot of moving pieces around it, and uh, that is pretty much the foundation for Blacks Inspire, like Mike was saying. Positivity in so many um, different aspects to bring our community to the next level and make us more empowered that when there are things happening that's not in our favor, that we would all be mobilized and united and be able to contact each other to do things in a intelligent, strategic form, but have some impact and be recognized and respected as human beings and as a community that no, you can't treat us like this or you can't do things like this without any repercussions. And as a mom, I want my kids to feel safe. I'm, you know, we're all human beings and all of our children should be able to equally feel safe moving around in this world, especially in 2017, right? Absolutely. So um, Absolutely. I'm hoping um, the, 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 the starting point is just finding each other and contacting each other and, um, you know, <laughs> Where is the person, the business owner in Saskatoon? How are things happening for them? What best practices are they doing? And how can we help them and promote them and, and, and vice versa? You know, if I want to go do my hair because I have to go on a business conference to Newfoundland, where can I find that hairdresser to help me hook up my hair? You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm, it's, mm-hmm. You know, the, the idea, I mean, I'm, I'm using it kind of light and um, simple initially, but we just need to find each other first. Right, and um, mm-hmm. and then start a, a good conversation going, and and then support and inspire each other. Absolutely, absolutely. And and from my observation, and I I completely agree with everything you're saying, but from the observation that I've made in in certain business circles, um, I see communities that work very well in keeping dollars within their community. Mm-hmm. And it's not that they're all in love with each other or that they're all necessarily right. compatible with each other. It's just that they know the principle of powers of numbers. Mm-hmm. So I really have to emphasize how important it is to support each other, no matter what, and also to keep Absolutely. whatever is happening within our community with our community because we're the first, mm-hmm. I find, to go out and share our business with everybody mm-hmm. else. And that when you're showing vulnerability – that's where the attacks come. If you have a crack open, that's where the door flies open. Do you know what I mean? What, what, oh, what yeah, do you say about that, conquer. Michael? Absolutely. Well, Michael, what's your opinion on that? Well, definitely. I mean, one of the, the key things, um, if you look around at all of the various different communities, is they tend to to circulate their dollars within their community much longer than our community. Um, mm-hmm. The black community actually is is the quickest to release our dollars out of our own community. Yeah. So that's, that, that, that's definitely something we need to do. Um, and, and one of the first things is, is A, through education. Um, mm-hmm. The fact of the matter is, is un- it's an unfortunate circumstance that we as black people have often been dependent on the services of others. So therefore, um, it's a little bit tougher as well. The fact about business loans, small business loans, entrepreneurship, um, oftentimes that hasn't been taught to our people. Um, so again, through time, as more people are educated and are aware, um, as mm-hmm. loans become more accessible to mm-hmm. black people, um, more businesses would be able to be created and henceforth um, we'd be able to hopefully circulate our dollars within our own community for a longer periods of time. Yeah, ideally that that would lend to uh, a functioning way of, you know, um, building up the community. And, you know, that is welcome, definitely. But I, as, as you said before, it has a lot to do with education, and I think it has a lot to do with identity. Um, and uh, identity starts very early. And, and if you're taught a certain way uh, to, to believe in self and to love self, uh, then you're going to uh, extend that love towards others. Uh, but as a, as a former educator, I see children who are being, you know, racialized at a very early age, and they're not taught where they come from. They don't know their roots. So if they don't know their roots, then their roots will be uprooted when storms come. And then they're left to feel that they're on their own and not in a community that can build them up. 
So um, when that happens, they, they don't feel an affiliation with anyone because it's just a matter of survival. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, and that's why, too, that the positive images, even for us as adults, is, is so important to reinforce that, yes, we are very talented, and yes, look, we are some, some, doing some dynamic things. We're successful, we're talented, we're creative, and our history doesn't just start from slavery. We were kings and queens, you know. Um, Absolutely. We have, our logo is you know, the colors are purple and gold representing loyalty. Um, the I in Inspire has a crown on the top, and all of those are intentional messages for our people mm-hmm. to see and be reinforced that we're powerful people and, you know, we're resilient. And, and, and yeah, we, we should walk with a pride that, you know, we're regal and carry ourselves mm-hmm. and uphold ourselves that way um, in situations to try to, always take the high road or take the approach that keeps us dignified. Um, So you'll see in the Blacks Inspire platform that as well as business tips and educational information that there's also just feel good stories and pictures and things reinforcing a positive image and seeing um, those of us in the community doing great things from having healthy relationships to um, young um, up-and-coming entrepreneurs, uh, young men and women um, qualifying for scholarships or um, inventing things, uh, businesses that are doing well, all of us need that positive reinforcement to help us keep us going, inspiring each other to keep um, doing what we're doing. Fantastic, fantastic. Now, Michael, how has this transformed your life? Well, I mean, this is something I've always been kind of passionate about doing. And as I mentioned before, um, the entrepreneur has always been within me. So um, by no means is this an easy task or an easy mountain to climb. Um, Again, dealing with our community does come with its challenges, as with any other community. Um, But in terms of transferring my life, I mean, it's, it's given me a sense of freedom because this is definitely something I want to do, um, something I'm passionate about. So, I mean, th- this, is, this is definitely a journey, um, and I'm going to enjoy every moment of it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I-, I-, I love our people, so what can I say? <laughs> Mike You're is so loving humble. the He's- journey. Mike is so humble. He's doing dynamic things. He's like in Uganda right now. He has wow. left this cushy job that all friends and family would say, what are you doing? And he's taking that big risk as well as doing something to support the community. And, and in him taking this leave from work, he even inspired me. So I'm taking a shorter leave, but a leave nonetheless. And I'm so happy that everything that fell into place so that we could be friends and, and go on this exciting journey together in this platform. It's amazing. Mike's such a humble guy. He's doing really dynamic things. <laughs> That's amazing. And and are are you now in the motherland or you'll be going there shortly or there? No, actually yeah. So so I visited here in December. Um and I was here for two months, so December through February. And then while I was here, that's when I kind of the epiphany or the thought came to, you know what, I need to get out of the work that I'm doing within government. It's it's time. So um, just on May 2nd, I packed my bags again and I'm, I flew back. So currently right now as we're doing this podcast, I am in Uganda. I plan to be here oh, wow. for two months um, and tell trying her, to her again – <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so here right now it's uh, approaching 2 a.m. Talk about oh, committed. So, eh? That <laughs> commitment. God bless you. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so um it, it's very interesting um it, it's definitely different um the, pers- the the perspective when you're actually down here. It's certainly not what you see again in the media. Um it has its challenges, just like any other country. But um, in terms of the people, what you see, I mean, it, it, it's not 
it's it's not everywhere that you're seeing children with flies around their head and things like that. Right. Um, those kind of images. So. Um, it's it's not it's not about people um, war everywhere down down here. Um, it's not about disease everywhere down here. Um, mm-hmm. But yet that's that's kind of the imagery you get, um, that everywhere there's lions running around. Um, and right. elephants running around, and it's like, oh, people, you have to be careful, or you could be eaten by a lion. Um, it's not like that at all. Uh, so it, it's, I mean, it's people here. I mean, it's not easy everywhere. Um, people work hard, um, and it and, and it is a struggle for some. I mean, there is extreme poverty, but mm-hmm. again, in Canada, there's extreme poverty as well. Um, if yeah. you if you look within Canada and look within some of the neighborhoods, and you chose to focus the camera on only the bad neighborhood, well, then the rest of the world would think too that Canada's got a problem. So, sure. um, I mean, it, it's a real. Uh, I mean, I'm very comfortable um, where I am, um, and I plan to hopefully expand the Blacks Inspire uh, vision to Uganda and other parts of Africa, possibly. That would be wonderful. That is amazing. Congratulations on, you know, uh, what you're, what you're doing and, and expanding the vision and uh, helping those through your leadership. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're welcome. Now, Sharon, do you have any upcoming projects, um, any events, any workshops that uh, we can expect in the next little while? Yeah, so as I said, um, actually by the end of this month, I'm going to be taking my leave off of work. I'm going to be off for the next three months. And it's really so that uh, we could focus and a lot of the events we've been wanting to do and put on, we're going to get to do. So we're going to be hosting a networking event happening in July. We are going to be out and about at major festivals like Jerk Fest. Uh, there's a, a Durham Caribbean Fest uh, there to yeah, share amazing. with Blacks Inspire. Yeah, just to have some more visibility, let people know about Blacks Inspire. We have some shirts um, that we will be uh, selling and expanding the network. We want more people to know about it and to join so that we can all connect with each other. Um, and yeah, we definitely you'll definitely see Blacks Inspire have sharing more educational tips. Um, our website, uh, an app. We have a lot of things coming up within the next couple of months. We're gonna be quite busy, busier than we've been. And currently you can find us on Facebook. Okay. So you're on uh, you have a Facebook page called Blacks Inspire. Are you anywhere else on social media? Yeah, we're on Instagram and we're also on LinkedIn. But okay. predominantly the Facebook group is um, where you see more of the activity and the ability to interact with the other business owners, the other um, members. I like to refer to them as the Blacks Inspire family. So, yeah, you get to interact with um, each other, share and promote your business, your talent, um, events that you have going on. We want to know what's going on in the community so we can be there to support. Um, It's important to circulate the dollar, as you say, in the community. So we like to have, to provide the option, the option to uh, choose black businesses first. We're not saying exclusively. Mm -hmm. We're saying, but we want there to be a platform available that should you want that option, you can choose, you know, uh, a black-owned business and to support that and have your dollar circulating where you'd like it to circulate. Fantastic. Well, I appreciate, uh, Michael, your time uh, calling from Uganda. Uh, thank you very much. I'm honored, Sharon. I'm, I'm honored uh, for you to uh, spend the time with us. I know you're both very busy, and uh, I really appreciate what you're doing uh, with the Blacks Inspire platform, uh, connecting black owners, uh, business owners together, um, people who are trying to make a difference, and, and also to um, uh, just to regroup uh, people and to redirect them to positive messages is a very important thing, um, especially for our community where we're still in many aspects healing, 
from the past, mm-hmm. so it's important to have uh, encouraging messages, and we appreciate what you're both doing. So thank you again, and I'm really excited to have uh, you on the Nikki Clark uh, live show coming up very yes. shortly, and you'll get to uh, meet the live audience, and I know they'll just fall in love with you and uh, continue the, the spirit of inspiration. So, again, thank you for your time. Sharon Fletcher and Michael Samuel calling in from Uganda, Africa, thank you. Uh, we appreciate you, and we hope to see you soon. Have a great night. Thank time. you so much. Thanks for having us, Nikki. Have a good night, too. My pleasure. Bye, thank Michael. You. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye, Bye Mike. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye-bye now.